Okay, well, uh, let's have a look at stripping the front cover. Uh, initially, what we're going to have to do is undo the bolts on the alternator. I'm doing the uh, top pivot bolt here and uh, the bracket bolts. What we need to do is uh, take the belts off initially, so I'm slackening everything off. Um, the alternator belt is underneath the uh, water pump belt so you're gonna have to slacken off the alternator and the power steering pump before you can remove them the bolts I'm undoing here are the uh, the adjuster bolts okay or the retainers which hold the pump in place but you can see the slots um, the pivot bolt at the top here for the, the pump what you can do is actually uh, adjust the belt tension with these bolts okay we're not going to go into that there's a different section on uh, this for for doing this okay and uh, i'm going to show you a trick here on uh, how to actually get the water pump belt off uh, nope that's the wrong side think about it okay always go clockwise so um, put the belt on the edge and then turn the crank and that will take the belt off really easily this especially applies to new belts all right I'm actually doing this the wrong way around um, but you get the idea okay you see that okay right so we've got two belts off here the next one we want to uh, undo if it's fitted to your vehicle this is the air conditioning um, pump belt is undo the uh, pinch bolt on the jockey wheel adjuster and take the belt off uh, this one's quite easy obviously and it's that quick okay now we've got this far I'm just gonna lift the uh, appliances out of the way and lock this off so I can then get on and take the crank damper off okay there is a different section covering removing the uh, dog nut and you need to put some effort to undoing it and doing it up and uh, what I'm going to do is take the pulley section off first for the belts run this is held on with four bolts which are M8 and I usually have a 10 millimeter head so you can use a socket uh, sometimes they're made of cast iron and sometimes these pulley sections are made of pressed tin so be careful when you are tapping it off that you use a, something like a soft headed mallet to get it off otherwise it will break I'm going to remove the water pump pulley section and I'm using this technique um, I've explained this in another section as well removing the water pump completely I would advise to slacken these bolts off first while you've got the belts on but the technique I'm using is just holding retaining it with the belt and um, knocking the bolts off okay Simple. Okay, so we've got those off, and uh, the next bit of hard labour is to yes, remove this the crank damper. I've done a separate section on removing this. You can see the tool that I'm using here, which is um, a Land Rover design tool. Okay, this one is uh, from a, a set I bought from Sealy Tools. Um, the whole timing pin kit is very expensive, which covers all the uh, Land Rover diesel engines. Um, not the TV5 obviously um, all the ones with the rubber bands in the front of the timing belts ok well this puller is very effective and um, you may be lucky you might have something that hasn't rusted in place but remember if you're doing a timing belt every 5 years and you've been off roading the chances are there will have been water getting up onto the crankshaft itself and seizing the, the two parts together uh, this uh, puller pulls evenly and uh, pulls it off the shaft. If you've noticed I've actually lubricated the threads here and you should do that with uh, these sort of tools. Um, it's respect for the tool but it also helps with a little bit of hydraulic um, pressure that applies to the thread as you undo it. Okay so basically that's uh, pulling this off. And, uh, once we've got the crank damper off we're, we're on our way to getting into the timing belt. There you go, we cover this boss part and uh, away we go. Right, water pump removal. I have actually done a section on removing the water pump which covers 
uh, the problems that you could occur and the bolt length which it's really important that you are aware of the bolt lengths on the water pump and on the timing uh, cover in general basically they're, they're all different lengths and they have to be put back how they were taken out so looking at the uh, bracket which holds the alternator and the power steering pump um, these this bolt at the top here okay goes into the timing case and there is another bolt as well which will retain the timing case which you'll see underneath here okay I'm using a ratchet spanner to undo these and this seems to be the easiest but you could always use a bar and an extension and a socket or something to get in there it's quite a tight fit if you're not aware of these you might be struggling just a little bit and uh, being forceful doesn't help these bolts have to be removed um, there's also a section I've put on this particular video which will show you what you need to do if you happen to leave the stud in at the top All right, so watch the water pump um, removal section to see what I mean about the stud right well look, have a look at this and uh, we'll see where the bolts are okay that's one here and one down the bottom and if you look just off to the side you'll also see where there is another retaining bolt for the back here right so looking at the water gallery which is here I'm now undoing the top bolt and then I'll be undoing the one underneath it these are the water gallery bolts for the timing case cover okay this runs into the block these cause problems and they get seized in so be aware of this you'll have to fit them back in once you've taken the timing case front cover off um, to hold it in place remember there's a gasket underneath there and you don't want it to move too much you need to keep it all even um, right so the timing case front cover the bolts themselves they uh, vary in length and there's a purpose between them why they're like that um, this section just on bolt length so you understand how long they are and which ones go where this is important um, you need to also talk them up correctly the whole lot needs to be talked up around here so the casing is kept straight otherwise you might find that the belt will run untrue and it's not unknown for a, a timing belt to wear on the casing if the casing's twisted and then um, wear and snap six times the uh, speed of human endurance and uh, this is just to uh, speed this up a little bit okay so that's off what you'll note that I'm using a soft headed mallet to crack the seal on the gasket here get that undone and out of the way all right then I'm not causing any damage so there you have it this timing belt is now exposed um, coming back to the where the brackets are and the bracket holes there's these two okay and uh, correspond bonds with the timing case if you look at the top that has a step in it all right so if you happen to have um, the stud still in the top of the uh, casing you'll have a problem undoing it so um, the best thing to do is either remove it or drop the bracket out of the way and then you can slip it your timing case front cover off with the uh, the stud still in there that makes it a little bit more difficult but um, it's your choice.